Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about recent guidelines and the judgment that has been given by the Honorable Supreme Court of India regarding the conservation effort of one of the flagship bird species of West India that is the Great Indian Bustard. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss about what is this bird, what are the major features of this bird and what are the conservation efforts that are being launched by the Supreme Court or headed by the Supreme Court. So first of all, if we try to understand that why this particular uh, news uh, has made a headline. So recently, the Supreme Court of India has constituted a seven member committee which will find or try to find a balance between the conservation measure for the Great Indian Bustard and also at the same time the effort to generate renewable energy in the same region. Because as of now, it seems that if we try to go ahead and put conservation efforts into place, measures into place, it will negatively hamper and or adversely impact the generation of renewable energy, especially the wind energy and the solar energy from the areas where the Great Indian Bustards are basically, basically resides. Now the development has came during the hearing of a case which is known as MK Ranjit Singh versus Union of India case. Although the top court had given a judgment in almost, uh, almost we can say three years before, before in 2021, 2021 related to the same matter. However, it is still continue to hear the case to ensure a smooth implementation of its rulings. Now, what is the Supreme Court's order that was given uh, in this particular judgment? So, first of all, if you understand, SC had ordered the installation of bird diverters where overhead power lines already exist. Now, if you look at this particular picture, as you can see, this is high tension wire and many times in the Great Indian Bustard, they are very heavy birds. When they fly through these regions, they are not able to see from far that there are hanging wires here and that is why they collide and die. So, to prevent such kind of death, collision related death, the Supreme Court has asked to install bird diverters, which basically as you can see something they look like this, basically a disc shape structure is there, which are tied to the high tension wire, high tension cables and these discs basically reflect back the sunlight and moonlight and that is why if the great end busters are flying through these regions, they by due to the reflection of these bird diverters, they know that these areas they have to avoid and thus their lives can be saved. It also has left the door open for the conversion of overhead cables into underground power lines. That was the main demand of the petition which was filed to Supreme Court 3-4 uh, years back where it has said that rather than depending on the overhead cable lines, rather than if depending on the overhead cable lines, if I try to make all the cable lines underground in this area, obviously the threats will completely disappear and that is the best thing that we can do to save the great investor from such kind of disasters. The installation of underground power lines for future projects is something that also was a matter of discussion. Now, before going into details about this, let us try to briefly understand about the bird itself that is the great Indian bustard. So, GIB is an avian species which has been classified as critically endangered, which is the highest level of threat we can see from here because after that, the bird or any particular animal species can either become extinct in wild or finally extinct overall. So, if you look at the IUCN status, it is obviously critically endangered and the reason is very same, uh, reason is uh, very clear because the current population of this species is less than 200 in India and they are mainly found in a narrow pocket of Rajasthan and the Kutch region of Gujarat. The biggest threat to these birds is obviously the overhead power lines about which we have talked about. Frequent collisions have resulted into the death of many great Indian buster. So, if you look at how the population of these major bird species has declined. We can see in 1969, the population of Great Indian Bustard was somewhere about 1260. Then further in 78, it became 745. Then almost from 1978 to 2006, it has remained steady or declined very, uh, what you can say, into a lower extent to 600. But since 2006, that we can see between 2006 to 2020, the decline is tremendous in nature. It has declined by almost four times. So, from 600 to less than 150, almost 90% decline has happened in overall 50 years time period. And one of the major threat obviously is the development projects where the overhead cable lines are being constructed. Apart from that, if you talk about the conservation measures that has been put into place by government and the local authorities, basically we are having conservation breeding that is being done here. However, if you talk about the Gujarat, where most of the bird species are situated, there are the three, four major issues that we can highlight. Obviously, the first is the high tension lines passing through the Nalia area of Gujarat. 
Apart from this, there are also some other threats for the great ended bustard that is increase in the encroachment in the areas where the bird species are living and thriving. Third, increase in the number of wind turbines because wind turbines also pose the same challenge of collision and collision related death. Then we have the habitat in Kutch is changing drastically due to several factors such as increase in the agricultural activities, invasion of uh, what we can say as Prosopis julifera which is a kind of plant that is that actually accumulates or absorbs huge amount of water leaving bird waterless. And last we can say traditional hunting that is being practiced by some of the tribes or a specific community that are residing in these areas. These are the major challenges. Now overall if you talk about the features of this bird, the scientific name of this bird is Ardiotis uh, nigriceps. The size is very large, actually 110 centimeters that is the height of this particular bird. Largest land bird of India that is your great Indian bustard found in the dry grassland and scrub forest kind of region. Location wise if you look at the map of India we can see from here that the largest population is found in Rajasthan then you have the second largest population in the state of Gujarat and then there is a possible breeding that can be done in some of the southern states such as Karnataka, Maharashtra and part of the southeast Gujarat as well. Now let us come back to what has been the effort taken by Supreme Court in this regard. So in the 2021 judgment Supreme Court has delivered a ground marking judgment here and the reason was because two years back in June 2019 a plea was presented to the Supreme Court where it was highlighted that GIB's habitat was confined to certain dry areas in the Kachi district and Thar district, Thar desert in Gujarat and Rajasthan respectively. And thus in these region due to huge private and public renewable energy infrastructure that is being developed the construction of overhead power lines has become necessary. And due to construction of these overhead power lines, these has become a primary cause of the death of this particular bird according to the petition. Now taking these matters into cognizance, the Supreme Court of India in April 2022-2021 has said with respect to obviously the Thar and Kutch region that basically the petition has asked to, uh, asked to delineate two kind of areas in this region. The first that will be called as or that was called as priority areas and in priority area areas petition actually asked the Supreme Court to make sure that all power lines are underground or are not allowed anymore in the future. That means they asked for complete ban or a blanket ban on the power lines in priority areas. On the other hand some areas were categorized as the potential areas and for these areas the power lines can be laid with proper mitigation measure and one example we have discussed in the beginning is the installation of bird diverters. So this was the judgment which Supreme Court gave in 2021 responding to the plea in plea of June 2019. Now in this regard government also responded and the government's response was that GIBs lacks frontal vision and since they lack frontal vision they cannot detect power lines ahead of them especially from far and thus obviously as we discussed these are very large bird more than one meter in sight and thus they are also heavy in weight these birds are unable to maneuver across power lines within close distances and that is why the government agreed that for a low voltage lines what happens when they collide with low voltage lines they undergo electrocution and electrocution is often the cause of the death due to a smaller phase to phase separation distance that we see in low voltage line on the other hand if you look at the high voltage line death is not happening due to uh, electrocution rather it is due to the impact of collision so that was the response of the government now very recently again Supreme Court has to reopen the judgment and uh, again it has to introspect uh, the judgment it delivered in 2021. The reason was because multiple solar and wind producing companies they again filed a fresh petition and application Supreme Court claiming that its judgment of April 2021 which put a blanket ban on the construction of the power lines is interfering with the ability of these firms to set up businesses in the Thar and Kutch region which is known for its potential of solar as well as wind energy generation. Now the bench has appeared to be sympathetic this time toward the center's stand as well as the plight of these firms and thus it has said that almost as per the April 2021 judgment 80,688 square kilometer of land that were earmarked for blanket ban of such kind of lines seems excessive and thus for uh, underground power lines in this large area 
construction of these underground power lines in such a large area seems kind of impossible challenge. And thus it has suggested that from this large area of more than 80,000 square kilometer, we should try to identify a critical area which will be roughly one tenth of the size that is 6,000 square kilometers where the undergrounding of the power cables or power lines can be done. At the same time, it also has directed recently that both parties should come up with the list of names for a committee which will tackle the GIB issues further. And thus, taking this into cognizance, the parties have come to an agreement where they have listed uh, the number or the members of the committee and thus taking that into consideration, the Supreme Court has recently created a seven member committee which has been tasked with suggesting conservation and protection measures for the Great Indian Bus Star. Now, the committee has to submit a report by July 31 and the court has lifted for now the blanket restrictions against the construction of underground power lines. So that is all about this particular issue. I hope you understood that what is the issue plaguing the great Indian bus in this region and what was the Supreme Court's role in overall conservation efforts of the uh, great Indian bus as well as the problem that it incurred to the development work especially related to the renewable energy development in this particular area. That is all for this particular video. Thank you very much.